the things that we are doing today, right now, they're making a difference. The, the, our behavior, the way we've changed our behavior, the, the, our strength, our resilience, our perseverance. Um, obviously, that slogan is more than a slogan in this together. But that is what will get us through this, is being together. And so I just want to um, underscore that everything that we're doing, these three announcements that you just heard or updates that you just heard, these are dealing with the facts on the ground um, as they unfold. We are not going to be figuratively or literally whistling past the graveyard. We are going to be taking the steps that need to be taken um, in the state of Indiana and tending to our tending to our business. No one is unaffected in our state. That's why we brought our senior team here so we can share with everyone what we know and how we're making decisions. We're thinking with our head and we're thinking with our hearts. We're following the numbers and the data, which I'm gonna talk about, but we also know that every decision that we make is affecting the people we love most. Uh, everyone is focusing on doing as much testing as possible, making sure we have the real numbers in real time so we can prepare for what's ahead. We know that the virus is here, we know that it's spreading, and the idea is to reduce the spread and lower the curve. These last few weeks have been tough for Michiganders. They've been tough for all Americans, but we know right here in Michigan, we have got a big challenge. Our families, our workers, and all of our mental health has been stretched. This is a challenge unlike anything we've ever faced before. I know many of you tune in every week hoping for some good news, hoping I'll say something that shows we're ready to turn back to life as normal. I ask that until that day comes, you keep making smart choices. I ask that everyone who can volunteer in healthcare centers or donate blood or money to their local food bank or medical supplies, visit michigan.gov backslash fight COVID-19. Stay home, stay safe, and every day that you do, we will get one step closer to the end. I want to thank the hardworking men and women in our grocery stores and the UFCW and Kroger and Meyer, and the people that are making sure we've got food for our families. I want to thank the janitorial services across the state that are cleaning all of these environments so that when we are out, we're safer. And I want to thank the teachers and of course our nurses and doctors, respiratory therapists and everyone in our healthcare system. We all have the responsibility to stay home and stay away from other people so we slow the spread of this virus. By doing this, we protect ourselves and we protect other people. We protect our healthcare workers who are on the front lines every day fighting a battle for us. As I've said before, we're in the early stages of this situation in Virginia. The actions that we take now will help shape what happens in the next few weeks and months. We can get through this, but we must all work together. We have been talking about how it is that we in the state and in this community that how Tennesseans can work together to address this crisis that we have, uh, COVID-19 that's, that's presented itself and is moving its way through this state and is creating tremendous hardship uh, from a health crisis standpoint and an economic standpoint. This is something that Tennesseans are gonna do together. We're going to address this challenge before us uh, individually, I've said that Tennesseans must individually have and take responsibility uh, to stay at home, to stay away, to, to do your part, to stay apart. There is, this is going to be best met because of the efforts of every single Tennessean, and we need you to engage. We need you to follow guidance. We need you to socially distance because a, a virus that transmits from social contact can only be slowed by reducing that social contact and staying away from people. I just want to say we know that it is incredibly difficult to make decisions that have required businesses to close and not only are we working hard to mitigate the health crisis and the 
effects of this for individuals and their health situation, but we're working really hard to mitigate the damages to business as well. When the clouds clear on this and, and we get beyond it, we want to be there on, on your behalf to help you get through, whether you're an individual, whether you're, you have faced this health crisis, or whether you are a business. We're working with hospitals and public safety officials constantly to prepare for what will be a difficult time over the next three or four weeks. And as we discussed yesterday, our models suggest cases are likely to increase rapidly in the coming weeks, and the strain on our health care system will be unprecedented. But we're also focused on the long game for how we can monitor, isolate, and put our communities in a position to mitigate the number of new COVID-19 cases over time, and that's where this tracing initiative comes in. By monitoring and isolating through an enhanced community tracing program, our state can be positioned to reduce the number of cases, new cases, in the long run. And what we mean by tracing is that when a person tests positive, public health officials gather information from that person about who else they could have infected. These people are known as close contacts. Public health officials then attempt to contact them, those close contacts who could have been infected. And then those close contacts are made aware that they need to quarantine or get tested themselves. As a reminder, there is tracing happening now, but this program that we're talking about launching today is a much more robust, targeted approach that we hope can be highly effective at slowing the spread of this highly infectious disease. And to be successful, it will take a coordinated effort and resources. And it's going to be a big part of our ongoing effort uh, to manage and fight our way through COVID-19. So what do we do? You have to get through it. You have to get through it. There is no simple answer here. You're not going to wish this away. You have to get through it. Uh, and you have to get through it intelligently, saving as many lives as you can. And that's hard work, and that's perseverance, and that's mutuality, and that's community, and that's finding your better self, and that's finding your inner strength and dealing with a situation that is almost unmanageable on every level because you are out of control. Uh, and this is a painful, disorienting experience. But we find our best self, our strongest self. This day will end, and we will get through it, and we will get to the other side of the mountain. And we will be the better for it. But we have to do what we have to do between now and then. And that's just what we're doing here.